so we need to feed in a position to our PC open node here and I'm going to output a single variable which is the surface position zoom in on this and plug this into the position here now in fact uh, that isn't going to work because the position that we're getting here is in shading space so it's been transformed into the local coordinate system of the object we're shading whereas the data that we wrote out here is going to be in world space so there's going to be a mismatch between the point that uh, it's expecting and the point that we're giving it so we need to convert this into world space. And we do that with a transform node and we can take it from current space to world space. We need to rearrange the parameters slightly so let's do that. We've got our base color wet parameter. Let's try putting that up next to base color. We've got our specular intensity wet. Let's put that next to specular intensity. And then we've got our three point cloud attributes. Let's select each of them and then select the arrow here which allows us to create a new group which we will call point cloud and then we want to select them all again including the opening closing brackets and then move them up to here go up we can see whether that's looking reasonable it's not uh, quite what I expected let's go back down and uh, edit that so I think we in fact want these to be here that's more like it Now we need this, these to be reflected in the surface itself, the parameter editor for the surface itself, and we can do that using promote material parameters. Now unfortunately this doesn't always work, and in this case, uh, as you can see, it hasn't. When it doesn't work, you have to bring up the parameter editor for the node and we're going to have to delete all of these so that it now has no parameters and then promote material parameters again and we can see this time we've got the, the tab for point cloud so we need to find the uh, files that we rendered out now I'm going to Tick this box down here, show sequences as one entry, and that gives us exactly what we want. I'm going to leave the search radius and number of points at the default for the moment. Let's change this to a nice red color, and on the specular tab, let's give a normal specular intensity of 0 and a specular intensity of 1 for the wet areas. I'm going to have to set up a camera. Let's do that like that. And 
I might. Like so. I don't in fact need my sphere showing. Let's get rid of that. And we need to create a render mode. So let's render and see what we get. Well, we're getting red where uh, the liquid is, uh, but it's it's bitty, so we probably need to increase uh, the number of points that we take into account, and possibly the search radius. Let's try rendering again. So finally, I'm going to render a sequence to make sure that it's really working. And I'm going to use a frame rate of 10 because that happens to be the rate at which we're recording. And I'm going to render frames 1 to 50. Let's just give that a frame range of 1 to 50. And let's run that and see what we get. Now I'll start this render going. And I'll pause the recording. Here's the result of that render. We've rendered 50 frames. I'm going to play it in real time. See what it looks like. Well, that's pretty good. The uh, extent to which the wet area extends beyond the fluid, uh, for example, trying to get rid of these areas of white here, um, you will need to tweak the parameters both in the shader here, which determine the search radius, but also you may need to change the parameters on the attribute transfers that we use here. So the radius, uh, the distance threshold for this attribute transfer and for this one. There's one thing that I forgot to do when uh, setting this up, which I should do now which is that when we created our particles in this POP network, we should have given them a life expectancy of minus one. Or rather, a very high life expectancy. Uh, there's a danger if we had a long animation, if we leave it at the default, they will begin to disappear. Well, I hope that's been a useful introduction to one method of how to build a wet map in Houdini. Thank you.